well, you weren't expecting me to read the red tops, were you? So we're on tour again. Come down here to look at this little one. 1958, Zagato Arbath Double Bubble, 750. This was one of the Team Roosevelt cars. And as you know, I've spoken about um, my admiration for the, the Roosevelts before. So this one, as I say, was a Team Roosevelt car. Now, they, a lot of these went out to America and Roosevelt Racing were the importers. So a lot of them come back from, from America. But what makes this one special is it was never raced in period, as far as we know. So it's never messed up. So a lot of them, you find they put big arches on them and stuff like that because they did style them racing in the, in the 60s and other things. You know, a lot of them were really butchered, whereas this never was. So when it was restored, it, it was actually a really good base, a really good start. And you can imagine a bad one of these, how bad it is, because you've got all the ferrous rust of a Fiat, and then you've got all the electrolysis problems of, of, of the Zagato aluminum coachwork. So when they're bad, they're really bad. Whereas this never was bad. So you've got probably one of the best out there, truth be told, because there's very few <laughs> that... that that ever escaped, you know, being near scrap, and certainly anything that was raced was absolutely mullered. So this this is a, this is a joy really to find one in this condition. Arbath proper started in 49, 1949. Uh, Karl Arbath, who's Austrian, he's not Italian. People think he's Italian because of course it's an Italian firm, but he's actually Austrian. So he's Karl, and then luckily changed it to Carlo to make it more friendly. So there's our man Karl. And this Austrian thing is why a lot of people call him Ardbart, but it's not, I just call him Arbath. But yeah, that's Carlo himself. 49 started out, and this is a 58. But this model started in 56, they, they started these. And, it, and if you don't already know, this is built out of the platform of a Fiat 600. The Fiat 600 was a brand new car at that point. Zagato bodied, and you know the idea is to make it a swoopy little coupe and so on. So you've got the double bubble, which is the these two humps here, really to, to enable room to wear a crash helmet when you're inside it, and also to keep the main part of the roof low. There's talk of how it helps duck the air into the into, into these cooling scoops here for the engine and so on. So various reasons, but you'll see the double bubble, it's just a feature of theirs. It also makes it stronger, so by having this ridge down the middle, that was another reason they did it. So there's var various uh, sort of schools of thought of what it's about. Um, the 600 platform would be cut down. I'm not sure if, the, if you could buy it direct from Fiat without all the bodywork. I'm sure to begin with they just had to buy a complete car. But eventually, I'm, I'm sure they, they come to agreement, because I've seen pictures of these sort of half chassis type tubs that would arrive and they take that and put the aluminium bodywork on it which makes it a very light nimble car and of course if you imagine the 600 sits sort of up here so significantly lower you have the beautiful deployment door handles which is a zagato feature so you pop that out like that then you can open it like that but these are absolute darling aren't they i mean i've always wanted a car with these on i've almost bought a set just to own some but yeah maybe uh I need to think about having a car I can fit them to. But yeah, so that's that bit. And then if we look the other side, we'll see how the lock mechanism works on it. So we can see we've got, we got the lock this end and the deployment button that end. So as you can see there, we've got this little cutout in here. Well, that will where the lock will lock into there. So that, you know, when that's in that shut position, that will lock into there and 
you know, and then it's flush. But yeah, you can see, so aerodynamics, that's the idea. So you have a, a big door handle sitting on the outside. But also, if you think about it, safety, really, you could use something similar today, couldn't you? So you don't get caught on the thing. But yeah, lovely. Beautiful thing, I think they are. And then, of course, we've got all our jewellery, haven't we? All our little badges. And in case we forgot, it is a fit. That's what it's based on. A lot of people forget, don't they, um, decry these Fiat saying, oh, you know, it's a Fiat, they're not very good, are they? But, you know, the Fiat have made some truly astonishing cars over the years. And, you know, anything you can use as a basis for something like this, well, that's quite special, isn't it? So we have our covered headlights. Again, this is an aerodynamic idea. So it's got all the sort of um, bits you get on far more exotic machinery. Not to say this isn't exotic in its own way, but it's based on something more prosaic, which means the actual running costs are far more reasonable. And because of the lightness, you actually have quite a potent little machine here. So at the factory, they were only 47 horsepower, but this one's been pepped up a bit. We've got 60 horsepower. So that's quite a leap, isn't it? So with that in mind, it's had a disc brake conversion on the front. And, you know, not the drums weren't adequate, but better with discs on it, isn't it? So there we are. So we've got a 850 Sport block. So we've definitely got the Alter Bianchi Arbath rocker cover, which has the incorporated inlet manifold and the Weber carb, the Weber twin choke. Now what you'll see is this, this is a cross flow cylinder head, but we have a Siamese port. So we only have one big port going in this side, although we've got four on the exhaust side, we've got four ports on the exhaust side. But these actually do flow very well. So a lot of people sort of, oh, you know, you've got that great big carbon, just one little hole, and then all this internal tracting going, going through, but it actually works very well. And perfectly adequate, 60 horsepower, going to really make this thing go, isn't it? Now, there is the original engine, a 750, which has been built by Tony at Middle Barton, who's a friend of mine, who's, you know, that's going to be a good little engine. And the original radiator, as well that could be retrofitted to the car if you wanted to do more historic events where that was deemed necessary. But for now, I think it's better this way, you know, a bit more pep, more usable, and it depends on the event. I mean, it's not, it's not that it's not eligible this way, it's just that if you wanted to be strict about it, you can go back to something that's, that's more of, the, of, um, of its time. We've already looked at the Arbath split sump. Um, they're you know real feature of these cars. So it's got all the right bits. It's, it's the proper thing. Arbath exhaust. Well, you wouldn't expect anything less, would you? <laughs> now these are particularly nice, aren't they? All these little aluminum trims. It goes well with the whole thing because you know we, we've got this aluminium coach work so to have the actual trims here all, all made in aluminium adds to this adds lightness as they'd say and just has that exotic feel doesn't it of, of, of yeah <laughs> even the upcaps aluminium this really was the first proper productionized R bath before this, they were pretty low volumes of everything. It's thought maybe 300 of these were made, which isn't bad going, but there's probably very few left today. Maybe as little as 100. So, um, you know, you ain't got many to choose from. They don't often pop up for sale. There's a few in some major collections. There's a, a lot went out to Japan. In the 1980s, there was a real following for them, along with Mini Coopers and, and the like. So a lot of stuff went out there. And the thing with that is that generally they stay out there. And of course, then we don't get to see them anymore. And of note, 
one of the most significant Arbuth collections has just left Europe and that now resides in Japan. So again, there's not so many out here. Oh, oh, you know, they, they, they're getting a bit, they were rare anyway. So yeah, there's not many opportunities to get on board something like this. So this is quite exciting. Hence why I thought we should come to do a little film on it because you know, as you know, I, <laughs> I love these cars. Yeah, that's why I go out to Italy to the track days to go and be around them and so on. So yeah, it, 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 it's very rare ones in the UK for sale, particularly one as nice as this. So this little one has the four-speed transaxle, which is basically the Fiat 600 transaxle. Uh, quite a big steering wheel, but you know, you want something to grab hold of, don't you? <laughs> You're throwing this about. Well, we've got these lovely bolstered um, Zagato seats, which is very evocative with the red piping. And this would be for your, for your um, strap to come through, or for your harness and so on. The uh, crackle dash, you know, finish so you don't get reflection off of it. But yeah, you can see how you sit in it, really comfortable. You know, I, I love the Fiat 600, Fiat 600, as you know, um, I'm a big fan. But this is a different thing altogether, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, there's this beautiful seating position, you know, you do feel that you're in a sports car. Although I must admit, <laughs> you'd feel a bit intimidating next to a Land Rover or something, doesn't it? Or a truck, it's going to be powering, powering over you. But yeah, lovely Jaeger gauges set out properly, you know, rev counter in front of you, exactly where you want it. Speeder to the side, well, that's not as important, is it? And then your auxiliary gauges here, which you need to keep an arm, but you know, it's really about that one, isn't it? <laughs> that's what they're about. Little peppy revy things, aren't they? But yeah, isn't this lovely? Beautiful. And these lovely controls. Got a bit of a history of the restoration work here, which is, is, is a good thing to see. Then we've got a before and after. Here we are at an event. So it's, it's, it's won some awards, this car. You know, and it's way worse, you know, back last century. But yeah, it's still holding up well though, isn't it? There's our lovely Gazzagato seats. You can see it sort of stripped down here. Let's see what we, we, we end up with. And then we, this is where we're talking about this, this um, aluminum coach work. So here's our aluminum coach work. And then if we look in here, we can see the Fiat 600 floor pans and so on. So they've made their own little jig for rolling it over on. Looks like they've let a piece in the front here. But you know, this all looks pretty good. You can see, well, you can see here, look, they've taken a bit out. They've let a piece in there. That looks nicely done. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's had some nice work. You know, look, look how nice it's smoothed off here. Now, you know, now they've worked it. Uh, you can see the structure of the seals behind, and then we've, we've got the alley covers, the factory covers. And then you see this area here, this, this is an actually an harbour strengthening area. I've made up tooling to make these for my one, which will um, we'll cut some of that in, won't we? Look at those. So yeah, you see this is, this is around the front axle area where the transverse spring mounts up and so on in your top A arms. So this is a good thing, they've strengthened all that up. That's all as it should be. Suspension work being done. It's all the usual stuff, but you know, it shows it's been done. You know, you, you're, not, you're not buying into a project, you're buying into something that's been done. It's, it's all, all sorted. So you recognize all this area from the Fiat 600, that's where your radiator goes and so on. Again, we can, we can have a look at, you know, have a look at iron. Oh look, and you see here, we've had to let the Arbath part in, you see? to let that bit in, haven't they? So nice to know, isn't it? Nice to know it's had some love. Okay. These are pretty, aren't they? These little stays. Same as in the, in the you know, engine cover area. So we've got a fuel tank and battery mounted up there. This is lovely, this little aluminium aperture, isn't it? The way they've done that. Got a spare wheel. Now these wheels are the proper Arbath um, with, the, with the cooling fins on them and so on. So this little, dear little brake reservoir with the Fiat written on it. Well, these are off the early 600s and they're actually very collectible. 
uh, that cross over with some of the Ferrari 250 range, so people pay a huge amount of money for them. So it's lovely, isn't it? But isn't this beautiful, this, this, the way this is made? It's so delicate. So this will be a steel frame, and then obviously this is the aluminium wrap around it. As we saw in the photos of the restoration, it's, it's, it's hold up well. I mean, you know, if you think how long ago that was, that's, you know, <laughs> when these cars were 25 years old, they were proper knackered. And this had a restoration 25 years ago and it looks factory fresh, doesn't it? Still looks beautiful. I mean, that is testament to a good job. And if you imagine what these aluminiums can, how they can corrode, the electrolysis you get in them, it'd all just bubble up and fester out if it wasn't any good. You know, it would be bubbled everywhere. So this is good, this is good. You know, you're fixing your costs with one of these. You know, it's all been done properly and you know what you're getting. Whereas you buy into a project, well, you know, <laughs> that's just the beginning of the expense, isn't it? But yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? So, such a dear little thing, isn't it? you want to pick it up and take it home, doesn't it?